in the 60s, I went to Berkeley. And just for fun, I took a genetics course from Kurt Stern, German-born American geneticist. It was the last time he taught the course, 1966 in the fall. And I just w went to the course. I could take any course I wanted. You know, Berkeley was my oyster. And it was fabulous. And afterward, after the first couple of lectures, I went up to see Professor Stern and I said, Dr. Stern, I cannot imagine people being paid to do this for a living. If humans and chimpanzees are indeed as similar as they appear by all of these approaches at the genetic level, and yet we are very different morphologically, we are very different in relative lengths of bones, we are very different in facial structure, for species that are so similar genetically. We are very different in ways of locomoting. We are very different in ways of life, considering how similar we are genetically. What does that tell us? So it tells us two things. First, that we, that we diverged very recently. And second, that somewhere along those lineages, there were perhaps changes in the regulation of genes changes in the times at which genes were expressed or the length of time they were expressed during development. Not that there were so many different genes. we just shown with all this difficulty that they were very similar, but that the timing of their expression might differ. It, it occurred to me then, and I, I think it was correct, that the same tools that one uses to understand differences between species can be used to understand differences between individuals, obviously at a very subtle level, but that lead some persons to be predisposed to, in this case, breast cancer, and other persons not to be. So it was, it was a fascinating search. It was a long search, but I set out in January of 1974 to ask the question, are there women who are particularly predisposed to develop breast cancer? If so, can we prove that that's the case by genetic means? The proof is in the genes. In this case, one has an actual capacity to state a hypothesis, to test it, and eventually to prove it by producing a physical reality, a, a piece of DNA, which in most individuals has a sequence which is completely normal and benign. The gene carries out a normal function. But in some individuals, a small percent of persons, there are mutations, that is, there are lesions in the gene which preclude its being able to carry out its normal function. Think of geneticists as minstrels, as traveling musicians. We have instruments. We have a set of skills. Um, our instruments can play many different songs. Our instruments are the capacity to discover what is hidden in the DNA. And it's, it, playing, playing an instrument is, is, is exactly like understanding the music of the DNA. And we can do that now. We have, we have extraordinary tools. It's like, the, it, it, it's like being presented with a Stradivarius violin to have the genome before one. It's an extraordinary opportunity. And, and my generation of geneticists have been the, the first to have this gift. Consequently, we can, we can do so much we couldn't do before. We can play songs of all kinds. And where people want to hear those songs, that's where we go.